Hello and welcome to another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. Today we have with us Errol Worrell and he'll be talking about Louis Latimer. So Errol, let's go right into it. Give us a brief description of his earlier life. All right, so Louis Latimer was born on uh, September 4th, 1848. Um, his parents were two runaway slaves. They ran away from, uh, from Virginia to Massachusetts. So um, the case, their case was significant because his father was actually caught by bounty hunters and returned to Virginia. But as you know, Massachusetts by that time was a free state. So um, they had a court case that went all the way up to uh, Massachusetts Supreme Court where a uh, abolitionist group, they advocated for him and ultimately purchased his freedom. Um, Louis Latimer grew up. Um, he eventually joined the Navy was honorably, dis, um, honorably discharged in 1863. Um, he went around Massachusetts seeking employment and ultimately found it as a, a clerk at a patent law firm earning $3 a week. Um, when his employers noticed that he was gifted to sketch the blueprints for patents, they employed him as the head draftsman where he began to earn $20 a week. That is amazing. That is amazing. And, you know, such information we really don't hear too much about. And I don't want to go back into his past, but um, um, my knowledge is that Frederick Douglass actually represented his father. Um, so that's that's always important information to understand. And maybe that was a part of, you know, an influence for him to actually, you know, propel him into the future that he would eventually lead. Can you talk a little bit more of what that might be? Definitely. Okay. So, uh, Latimer, he pretty much perfected his craft, and then in 1876, he was tapped by uh, Alexander Graham Bell, the creator of the telephone, um, to sketch the blueprints for the actual telephone. So, about four years later, in 1880, he moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, he accepted a position as the head draftsman and uh, patent expert for um, U.S. Electric Lighting Company. The CEO of that company at the time was a man by the name of Hiram Maxim, who was actually the chief rival of Thomas Edison. So by this time, Thomas Edison had invented the light bulb, which was pretty much a glass bulb um, that inside it had a filament, a carbon wire, um, which was typically made of around that, sorry, would either be thread, bamboo, or paper. Um, this carbon filament would heat up and it got so hot that it began to glow. Thomas Edison, he ran electric wiring through it to wire to light the inside of homes, but the problem was those bulbs weren't lasting as long. So Maxim wanted to capitalize off of the shortcoming of Edison's bulb, and he asked Latimer to figure something out. Latimer finds this cardboard envelope that he uses to cover the filament so that the carbon wouldn't release and that the bulb will last longer. This makes the bulb more efficient and less expensive, and it begins the mass production of glass light bulbs, which ushers in the age of uh, electric lighting. Oh, wow. And this is all coming from a black man. Yeah, indeed. Wow. Indeed. And we understand him to be essential with a lot of things. We're talking about the telephone. We're talking about um, basic lighting. Um, he, he, he has a, a slew of inventions by this time. Um, he invents the train water closet, which is the bathroom compartment of, of trains by this time. Um, so in any case, um, his success with um, having making this long lasting bulb earned him national success and acclaim. Um, as major cities began to install electric lighting on their streets and inside their businesses, he heads projects in New York City, Philly, Montreal, Canada, uh, New England, and London. So in 1890, he's actually hired by Thomas Edison um, for his company, which would later become GE, General Electric. Oh, wow. And not too many people actually know this, you know. He was in such high demand that he was actually sought out outside of the country as well. Indeed. Um, so with all the acclaim that he actually earned during his lifetime, why do you think it is that we don't hear too much about him now, especially when his work has been instrumental in, you know, literally shaping the way that we exist now? Um, Latimer's story is particularly inspiring to black and brown children. Um, who have an interest in math, science, and the arts. Um, in this age, there's a big focus on the STEM fields, and Latimer excelled. 
in in art in in science um, he became a charter member of the Edison group which were um, the Edison pioneers which was a group of distinguished individuals who were credited with creating the electrical industry he's a, and he's a black man in the ninth in the 20th century that's amazing and I think that that's that's definitely inspiring and in hearing you know about all of these these achievements how does that you know encourage you or inspire you to do what you do for our community Vladimir mm. was very uh, he was a genius but he had very practical solutions to what were complex problems so I look at his life of innovation and, and I see that same I have access to that same potential in my own life um, with if I just sit and think, you know, mo most problems have very simple solutions. He, he just encourages me to, to, to think and it's happened to my own creativity. That is awesome. But before you go, we're going to have to ask you to leave us with a quote or a saying, you know, something that's going to push us into the very next episode. All right. So Latimer himself said that we create our future by well-improving opportunities, however sm small and few they may be. Oh, wow. That is an excellent quote by an excellent man. And we thank you very much for bringing his story to life. Thank you for watching another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. We look forward to seeing you soon.